Captain Brendan Phillips, welcome back to the show. It seems I managed to upset some friends of yours with the focus and direction of our last conversation, so this is my attempt at redemption. Uh, it seems I missed an opportunity to hear a great story from you, so fill me in on that story uh, through your life and career that's developed out there on the water. Well, um, <laughs> yeah, you definitely uh, tweak some tail feathers there a little bit. Um, but, I mean, that goes back to what I was talking about, uh, you know, last time we talked, you know, about uh, the people we work with out here. Uh, you build a lot of unique relationships, great friendships, and uh, and and sometimes you, you find those people who are fiercely loyal. And uh, I've... I'm lucky. I've got quite a few people that are just fiercely loyal. I, I've had lots of people in my life where, you know, I'll, I'll tell them, you know, it's, it's uh, probably not a, a good thing to tell people you're my friend, you know, because uh, there are a lot of, a lot of people that hate me as well. So, uh, but, you know, you always know the, the good friends cause you know, they don't give a crap, you know, they, you know, they're your friend regardless. And uh, you know, a lot of that goes to, the way that you work, the way that you carry yourself. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm lucky that, uh, I have a demeanor that fit, fits in pretty well out here. Um, you know, um, Jake Johnson, he's, he's been one of my, my best friends for, for a pretty long time. Uh, he and I both started in the fleet, you know, we, uh, not the same fleet, but we both worked in the fleet, you know, at different times. Uh, you know, it's kind of funny how, uh, how us ex fleet guys will stick together. You know, we, kind of for whatever reason feel like we're the cream of the crop or something you know it just uh it, it fleet guys have this this ability to to put up with a lot and uh and they're flexible very flexible and uh my friend jordan you know he's uh i've worked with him gosh a little over i think 10 years now he, he works at riverview boat store i uh i started working there painting boats um that's uh, pretty much where I got my start in the wheelhouse, you know, uh, but uh, Jordan's the same way, you know, he's uh, he can be kind of a, a pain in the rear. You know, he, he likes to stir the pot a little bit and get people uh, get people egged on, but uh, he's, he's a good guy. Um, but yeah, it's just um, tow boaters in general, you know, they, uh, they, they fiercely defend the things they care about. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's, uh, they didn't mean nothing by it. I'm sure they just, uh, they know me pretty well and, and they're protective. So, but, uh, yeah, no, it's, uh, that's, I mean, that's one of the many things that, uh, when, when people, uh, talk about wanting to come to work out here and, and you know, it's, uh, somebody posted on Facebook, you know, what are the top three things that, uh, you love about your job, you know, and, and for me, you know, it's the sunrises and sunsets, my crew and you know, people I work with, uh, and the excitement, uh, it's, um, tow boating is is exciting if you want it to be i mean it's uh there's there's a lot going on all the time so but yeah they uh i don't know i mean they've, they've known me a long time so they know uh, a lot of my my life history and, and a lot of the stuff that i don't typically talk about so that's probably why they feel that way but uh yeah it's um it's great having people like that in my life um, but yeah it's uh Speaking of Riverview, I um, I just did a uh, a trip for them on the uh, Western Enterprise. Used to be the Far West, and uh, I um had made a trip up to Seneca, Illinois, and I I haven't uh, been up since I was a deckhand. And uh, gosh, I mean, it's uh I think we talked last time about how much the river changes and and stuff like that, and uh, you know, it's it's almost like uh, going down memory lane. You know, and uh, I grew up um, in Peoria, Illinois, or across the river in Washington. But, uh, you know, I spent the, the last last few years that I lived in Illinois up in the um, uh, McNabb area, which is by Henry or Hennepin, if you know where that's at, LaSalle, Peru area. And uh, it was funny. Uh, we, we had tow work in, uh, in Lakin, and we, we actually had to wait there quite a bit. And uh, uh, we... Uh, <laughs> If, if it had been a different day, you know, the weather was a little bit better. Uh, you know, I was telling the guys, you know, if you uh, right below the lake and bridge, there's a marina there. And uh, if you put your boat in at the marina there and you walk across the parking lot, there's this little place called Mr. Mike's. And uh, they have some of the best cheesy beef sandwiches you have. I just, I love Mr. Mike's. Every time I get a chance to stop there, I, I got to stop and get me a cheesy beef. So, um, you know, went up river from there and, you know, uh, 
the uh the, the LaSalle area has changed a little bit. They've uh, got some different tugs up there. I, I um it was kinda I saw the uh the triple M is down at uh Ham's Harbor there in Chillicothe, which is normally up there at Myrtle Sand and Gravel. And um, you know, it was kinda odd not seeing seeing that boat there. It's kind of a cool old boat. And uh, you know, went up river and and saw some more stuff I hadn't seen and went through uh the the lock there at Marcel's and uh, it was funny, I had a conversation with the lock guy there and uh, he was on, you know, the standard yellow lock cart. And uh, I was telling him, I was like, you know, last time I was I was up here, I was a deckhand on a on a shuttle boat just running sand up there. And the lock cart up there was a lock cart back then. It it was this little green looking like four wheeler, you know, and it, and it's just amazing that uh you know, I, I don't know how, how durable they are, but you know, you'd think that something like that stick around for a little while. And so, but I was joking with him. I was, I was telling him, you know, I was like, you know, back when I was on deck, you know, we used to, used to carry these, uh, butch's pizza. Um, it's, uh, really just a, a thin crust bar pizza and you'll find them in a lot of the local bars in that area. And, uh, they have the, uh, it's, uh, uh, white, white garlic and sausage pizza is probably my favorite of, of theirs. And, uh, we used to, we used to carry extras on there to give to the lock guys. And, uh, you know, we were talking about how times change, you know, nowadays you kind of got to be careful about doing stuff like that and whatnot. But, uh, went up to Seneca and just the, uh, just the, the houses that are being built uh, along the banks there. I mean, it's just amazing how much things are growing and I mean, the houses, I mean, they look, <laughs> look like pretty expensive houses. They didn't look like the, uh, the trailers and whatnot uh, that I used to see when I was up there. Um, I actually, for a short period of time, lived in, uh, there's a, on the left ascending bank there, there's a, it looks like a campground, but it's, you know, you rent the slip, you, you basically live there, people live in their campers. And I had rented one of those out for, for a few months when I was, uh, when I was up there and transitioning through my divorce. And, um, you know, just, uh, that, that was as far up as we went, but, you know, it just kind of brought back all these these memories of, of running the Illinois river, you know, and why I kind of love being a deckhand. Um, you know, the boat we were on was a, a 1500 horsepower tug and, you know, just a six man crew, you know, to a captain, a pilot, mate, watchman, two deckhands. And it was, um, you know, it, it wasn't super hard work. We did all our own tow work and, and, uh, you know, when we get groceries, we just go into the dock and, and, uh, you know, pick up a, a crew vehicle, run into high V and it's where I get my kites, <laughs> you know, cause gotta have kites, you know, and, but, uh, you know, I just remember, you know, the way we used to do our meals and stuff there, uh, you know, back watch, you know, they'd make breakfast and front watch would clean it up. And then, uh, you know, lunchtime you're on your own and, and at dinner time, you know, back watch would make dinner and front watch would clean it up. And, you know, uh, with 1500 horsepower tug pushing, eight loaded barges, you know, sometimes it gets down pretty slow, you know, two mile an hour. So you spend a lot of time looking at the same bank. And, um, you know, I remember, you know, I get my, my cleanup done and get the toe check, get tight and all that stuff. And when we get done, I'd make myself a big, big cup of coffee and, you know, uh, I go sit on the Tonys and just watch the scenery and watch the sunset. And, and, uh, I just, I, I loved it. It was a great, um, great experience. You know, it's uh, when you have a small crew, you know, you don't have a, a lot of room for drama. You know, it just doesn't seem to to have a, a whole lot, you know, and, and usually when you do it, it gets weeded out pretty quick. And of course, back then, you know, times were different, you know, and you know, we <laughs> horse play, horse play was a common thing. You know, I, we, we had a, a deckhand and a captain that was big into MMA and and it was they, they were always tussling, you know, and <laughs> sometimes it get a little a little out of hand but you know you got a lot of time to burn and, and think and sometimes you tend to goof off a little too much but um it was always a good time i really enjoyed it um that uh, that far west was a, a fun boat to ride i haven't um haven't been on a, a 3200 in, a, in a, quite a while uh and uh it, it was a little bit of a challenge a little slow on the ship ups but uh all in all good boat uh, i had a really really fun trip um you know, it, uh, boat people would know I, it handles kind of similar to a, a St. Louis ship. Um, 
and if you uh if you decide to slow steer things it, it's a little bit more like a jet boat you can get deeper in the bends with it but uh with 12 loads southbound pushed out pretty good i was pretty impressed with it i um had a lot of fun on there um it was uh kind of like a little vacation honestly so but uh you know it's uh it was nice to to have a relaxing ride up up and down the illinois so i got to do tow work in places i hadn't ever done tow work before uh, i mean other companies do tow work in a lot of the places we don't but um you know they uh, we did some tow work in henry and uh, it was the first time i ever had to do tow work in Harden. that was a little different uh, but uh, all in all went went pretty good uh, you know it was a, a fun trip and you know it's uh yeah uh, there's a uh, it is it's nice seeing that stuff i mean i used to canoe and kayak the illinois river quite a bit on my off days um, i've actually gone all the way from basically lockport all the way down to to uh um pure marquette state park before i did it in sections i didn't do it all at once i don't have enough time to to take a a month and a half long trip although it wouldn't really take you a month and a half if you didn't get distracted but i i have a tendency to um I, I call it river ADHD. I, uh, you know, I'll see an Island and I want to explore it or, you know, I might see a, a tributary or something and I'll, I'll end up two days up a tributary somewhere. And the next thing you know, it's I'm, I'm three or four days behind schedule. So I got to make up time. So, uh, it's, uh, I spent a lot, a, a lot of my uh, time, you know, at least I used to before I got married again, but I, I spent a lot of my time around the water. I, I just, uh, can't seem to get enough of it. Um, you know, a lot of people, I mean, most boaters I know, you know, they have boats and go fish and do all that stuff. You know, and, uh, I was, um, uh, talking to, uh, um, a lock lady up at, um, at lock Two uh, angel. She, uh, she does something with, uh, I think it's called pool Two uh, association. That's, it's basically a bunch of pleasure boaters and, and environmentalists type people that want to basically make pool Two sustainable and stuff. And, you know, I always make the argument that, uh, you know, tow boaters are boaters. I mean, we, you know, yeah, we're on the commercial side, um, but, you know, we have a vested interest in, in recreational traffic as well, because well, most of us do it, um, you know, and, and that's, uh, it's funny enough. I mean, that's, that's a common argument that I make when, when I'm riding into the Coast Guard and they're talking about removing day boards or different atons you know I, I i almost always include my emails you know that hey you know these aren't just used for commercial i mean i when i go down river you know i go online and i print off the pdf chart for for the section i'm running and uh you know most of the time i i don't use my my gps on my cell phone most of the time my cell phone dies within a day or two and and i just don't have any connectivity so you know the only real good way for me to know where i'm at is either to to know where i'm at or to um look at the day boards, you know, and, uh, the day board gives you the mile and, and tells you exactly where you're at. And, uh, so, the, I mean, the eight times are just as important, you know, for, for recreational traffic as they are, are us. Um, sometimes I, uh, I feel like that's, um, kind of a, a thing that we don't really pay attention to, you know, when the, the commercial towing companies don't, uh, look out for the little guy. I mean, they don't have the money we have to, or the influence really to, uh, to keep things that we need and to, to make things, make changes. So, um, you know, that's, uh, one of the things, I mean, I know we're looking at, um, taking away a bunch of day boards down on the, um, from St. Louis down to, to Cairo. And I, I wrote this big, long email out about it. And I'm, I kind of, I get involved with that stuff quite a bit. I, um, when I see something that needs to be fixed, I, you know, and, and I feel like, we should all do that. We should all get involved in the river industry um, and, and advocate for, for our industry because uh, nobody else is really doing it. Um, I mean, yeah, you've got the Waterways Council and, and AWO and stuff, and, and they advocate, you know, for, for positive changes, but uh, they advocate from the perspective of a company, whereas to I have the ability to advocate from the perspective of a mariner. And, um, not always, but sometimes, you know, the two aren't aligned, you know, what's good for us isn't always good for the company. What's good for the company is not always good for us. So, you know, it's, it's really important to be proactive and, and I really try to try to do the best possible. 
I, I like I like getting involved. Um, that's one uh, one thing I love about Riverview. Uh, Jeremy is always really proactive, and he's always calling and asking my advice or giving you know giving me an opportunity to to speak my opinion. Um, you know, he regularly informs me about meetings and, and things, and invites me to come along. And uh, you know, it, it's um, it's it's had some good changes. And, and I think that if more people got involved, uh, this industry would be uh, a lot better place for all of us. So, but, uh, yeah, I, the Illinois river, it's, uh, oftentimes referred to as the shit ditch. Um, you know, a lot of people, uh, may know or may not know why it's referred to that. Um, you know, it, um, I never noticed it when I worked on the Illinois river because my first couple of years on the river, that's, that's the only place I ever worked. But I mean, it, it does, it smells awful. Uh, it's, it's better now than it used to be. Um, but the reason it's called that is, um, you know, when you get above Lockport lock, uh, you have the CSC, which is the Chicago sanitary canal and they don't do it anymore or allegedly they don't do it anymore, but they used to back in the old days, they, that was their sanitary canal. They would literally dump raw sewage down that canal and it would just feed into the Illinois river. And, uh, you know, uh, it's, uh, I was never alive for it, but I always heard stories about, you know, how, how it wouldn't freeze above, uh, Marcel's, you know, and, uh, you know, cause it was just so polluted and, and whatnot. And, um, my last trip up there, you know, it was, I was surprised at how clean it looked in comparison to even when I was on deck, you know? And so that's a, a testament to, to the way the river changes and, and, uh, you know, things that they're doing to, to be better about it. Um, you know, and it's just, uh, I, you know, I, I run up the Illinois quite a bit at my other company and, um, you know, I, I guess I just never really I just kind of going through the motions and, and didn't take the time to, to notice some of this, the, the stuff, you know, and it's, uh, uh, it was, it was fun. Um, but you know, it, that's, uh, that's the way things are, you know, it, it changes every day, every single day. And them guys in the lower can tell you all about it. How many years had it been since you've been on the Illinois? Um, so I've been on the Illinois pretty much every year since I've been on tow boats. Um, but I haven't really been above Peoria in, gosh, uh, you know, it, it's been a long time. Um, I think I maybe have made one or two trips up to Ottawa in the last, last, I don't know, six years. I think maybe two trips in the last six years. And then before that, I hadn't really uh, other than being on deck you know i hadn't really been above pure for four or five years i mean it's 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 been a while so before we move on to a few other questions that i've written down since you've been talking uh do you have any stories you can share how you met jake and jordan uh any good stories about them may embarrass them on the show a little bit <laughs> uh well, uh, Jordan, um, I met Jordan. I was a, a deckhand. I, I just left the shuttle boat division and went to line boats. And uh, Jordan had uh, delivered groceries. And um, uh, he worked for Riverview and still works for Riverview. And, uh, uh, you know, like back then, you know, I, uh, I, I like to kid around a lot. And, uh, you know, he, he's kind of, um, well, at least back then he was kind of shy and and so I would just kind of flirt with him a little bit and that would get him all uncomfortable and stuff. And, um, his, his boss wasn't very, but he kind of egg it on a little bit. So, but, uh, yeah, I, I met him doing that. Um, you know, and, and I mean, I'd see him pretty regular. I mean, it seemed like we are always getting groceries from Riverview. I mean, they were basically the best company to get groceries from on the upper. Um, you know, and they'd even run groceries over the Illinois River sometimes or, or uh, in the wintertime, they'd run down and deliver wherever. Um, I know back then, uh, Jeremy had a good partnership with uh, S&S there in Burlington, I believe. And a lot of times he'd go on vacation and Jeremy would help him out. Um, you know, they, they work together real well. Um, Jeremy's pretty good about that. He tries to work with other grocery companies as best he can there. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, uh, uh, you know, I, I think 2015 i think it was 2015 is when i started painting boats for for riverview and and you know started working with jordan more and more and um you know i think um he got his license at the same time i did he he runs the tug there at 12 and then he's um basically like a vessel manager also he, he's got a lot of hats that he wears um 
you know, and just work with him for off and on. I mean, I, I'm not full time at Riverview, but there was a few years there where it felt like it. I'd get off one boat and get on another boat, get off there. And uh, especially when after my previous divorce, I mean, I spent five years living out of my pickup truck. So, um, you know, I, I moved out of Illinois in 2017 and, and claimed residency up in South Dakota. They had this wonderful thing where you could be a uh, what they call a permanent RVer. And um, I just lived out of my truck and uh, traveled all over the place. It was uh, it was a it was a good life. I really really enjoyed living out of my truck. I put a lot of money back, uh, which you know it's not hard to do. I think my annual expenses were twenty six thousand a year, and I was making well over a hundred. You know, so um, you know, a good life. Um, you know, I just uh, I see Jordan a lot at these meetings we go to, and then um, you know I'm always. You know, anytime Jeremy needs any help, he, he knows he can call and I'll, I'll jump on a tug or whatever he needs. Uh, I mean, I've run groceries, I've uh, painted boats, I've, you know, decked on his boats, I've, I've anything he's ever needed. I, I, I've even gone down the shipyard there in Amelia and helped him out down there. So, uh, you know, and, and he always, you know, he's, he's always treated me really good. So uh, that's one thing that I always love about going over there. You know, the, the people... Uh, Riverview are, are amazing um you know and then uh jake um I, I i know i decked with him once um but he and i never really actually worked together uh where we started uh um basically knowing each other is we we both ended up on a safety committee together and uh there's always an argument you know whether or not uh so i was the chairman of the safety committee and, and he always says that he was the vice chairman i was like no no no, you weren't the vice chairman. There's not two, only one. I was the top dog, not you. And uh, so we have this back and forth constantly where he's uh, always trying to one up me, uh, professionally at least. And, uh, you know, so um, like the big thing that he has now is, um, you know, he had an option, opportunity to uh, take a front watch job on my boat. And, uh, you know, he'd made a, a comment that kind of hurt my feelings a little bit, you know, and he's like, well, I'm a, I'm a top tier wheelman with an impeccable safety record and I can be choosy. And so now that's an, an, an ongoing gag that we, we kind of have now. He constantly lets me know he's a top tier wheelman. And I always have to tell him that I push more tonnage than he could dream to push. And it's just constantly back and forth. And it, it's funny because like when people see us together, you know, they, they think that we're fighting. They think we're arguing. And really, we're just trying to egg each other on and encourage each other to be better than what we are, you know, and, um, you know, and, and don't get me wrong, it goes both ways. I hurt his feelings once. Uh, uh, it was shortly after that conversation. I let him know that it kind of hurt my feelings and, and I just let him have it. I just told him, I was like, well, you're a mediocre pilot at best. And uh, I can tell you that he's not let that one go. He, uh, he constantly, I, I feel guilty as shit for saying it. That was rude. I shouldn't have said it. And, uh, but he, don't, he doesn't want to go, he lets me know that I wounded him. So, but, uh, you know, he's, uh, he's always been a, um, he's, he's one of those guys. He, he, he knows when to be a goof off and, and he knows when to be, you know, professional and, um, you know, he's, uh, he's, he's captain now and, and, uh, he's on a pretty nice boat and, um, you know, he's, he's, uh, got a good future ahead of him. You know, uh, I always give people crap because, uh, I'm not sure who started it, but they'll, you know, it's, uh, it's Jake Johnson from Wisconsin. And, uh, I always, uh, I always give people crap, you know, Oh, you don't know Jake Johnson, Jake, who uh, Jake Johnson, you know, Jake Johnson from Wisconsin, son of John Johnson from Wisconsin, heir to the Johnson throne, you know, make it a, a big deal. Just being a smart ass constantly ribbing each other. But, uh, you know, Jake comes from a, a really good family. Uh, his dad is a, a tug pilot up in, uh, uh, McGregor Prairie to Shane and uh, you know um, recently his his grandmother passed um, I, I love her to death she uh, she met me I think once or twice or no actually it's been a couple times actually and she's just she's always been super sweet to me um, you know she she always asks about how I'm doing tells me to stay out of trouble which she knows I need that you know and, and uh, you know he just um he, he's he's got a, a great family and, and uh you know uh, I, i'm a got parent to one of his daughters and and so we we've, we've constantly um 
call quite a bit. Um, there was a while there where his wife was referring to me as his, his workplace boyfriend, just kind of give, cause she likes to give him shit too, you know? <laughs> so everybody likes to give everybody shit. That's just how the tow boat industry works. If they're not giving you shit, they don't like you, you know? So it's uh, a lot of people, you know, it's, uh, I think I said my last interview, you know, you, you, you can't be too sensitive. You know, it's, uh, it's going to hinder you more than it's going to help you. You know, but, uh, yeah, no, he's a, uh, he's a great guy, a uh, great wheelman. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's always been a pleasure to work around him. I know we had a, a trip here recently where, uh, we were, um, we were both on the Ohio river and he was doing everything in his power to lap me. And, uh, you know, he, he he's always talking about how many ton miles of the gallon he's, he's done this that and the other and and i i'm always busting his chops you know you're not gonna lap me and even if you do it's not a fair race because i have more stops than you and you know a couple times it's like oh you know i i've got more barges than you do and uh you know just just constantly busting each other's chops but it's 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 always been fun because um you know periodically it, it just seems like we uh we can never get away from each other you know we're, we're either following you know following him or he's following me or you know, we're passing on the river and, you know, it's, it's, it's fun. Um, you know, I acted as a bumper once in the ice. We, I think we were there at the Browning beer joint and I uh, just had a horrible ice gorge. And he's like, I hope, I hope you're anchored. Cause I'm going to land on you. And, you know, he never got close cause the ice just wasn't going to let him, but, uh, you know, he, he fought getting around that, that turn for a couple hours. I mean, it was just a, a nightmare. Um, you know, and it was, uh, it's always fun seeing him work, you know, um, and he's, he's, he's bailed me out a few times. I, I had a, a couple of stretches there where, where I would, uh, work in a, another company, have him come in and, and fill in for me and, and whatnot. So I get my, my time to, to rest and whatnot. And, you know, uh, it, uh, it's, uh, it's always good. Um, we go on vacation together periodically. We just came back from the Dominican. That was, that was a lot of fun. He ended up using a, uh, they had this like concrete slab and him and my relief on here, uh, BJ, he, uh, they, they were used as a slip and slide and completely just having entirely too much fun. And, and you could tell because there's this old lady that just wasn't having it. She was, she was not enjoying their shenanigans. That's for sure. But, uh, yeah, it's, uh, I, been around them a lot, uh, a lot. Um, both of them are great guys. Um, you know, my relief on here, BJ, um, forever. He's got some incriminating videos of me back when I was a deckhand. Uh, just, uh, I, I used to listen to a lot of like rave music. And, uh, I remember I was, uh, he was a new guy, he just, uh, just hired in. I'd been, been on the boat we were on for, I think a year or two. And, uh, you know, Beansy was new, you know, they, him and the, the watchman went out to check tow and left me to do the cleanup. And, and I, I don't know, I was just having a wild night and, uh, you know, I'm cleaning the stove and I got the disco music playing and I got paper towels strung everywhere, <laughs> going all over the place, had no idea they were there watching. And, uh, they, <laughs> BJ's getting the whole thing on video and, you know, he swears to God, he doesn't have that phone anymore. He doesn't have the video, but I dread the day that, that, you know, I retire and it pops up mysteriously. So, but, uh, I just, uh, it, it, you know, I made a lot of really great friends out here and, and a lot of really good pilots, a lot of really good deck crew, you know, uh, the watchman that I work for on that boat, he's a, he's a mate now and, and does a, a wonderful job. Uh, you know, I, I still get to talk to him on a regular basis, you know, and so it's, uh, yeah, the, there's there's all kinds of shenanigans that goes on. Um, you know, uh, we used to, well, not used to, I, I still occasionally go uh, camping up in La Crosse, which is where Jake's from, Wisconsin. And, uh, you know, it's just, uh, it, it's a fun time up there. That that town has so much to offer. They you know, got all kinds of bars, nightlife, um, you know, camping, outdoors activities. It's, it's just a, a wonderful area. It's beautiful. Um, you know, uh, the, uh, the Newport captain for Riverview, Rick, he, uh, used to be my pilot for uh, like two trips and I went to Riverview and, uh, he lives up in the lacrosse area and I got to go out with him, uh, what I call the Wisconsin Bayou 
which is, they have all these back slews and slips and stuff. And it's just, it's amazing up there. And you know, I wouldn't mind living there someday. Um, certainly better than Oklahoma. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, you know, you get around tow boaters and you can almost guarantee you're going to, going to have a, a fun time. Hopefully not too much fun. So. Well, speaking of, uh, do you know Ty and Marcus Matheny? Um, yeah, I, I know, uh, I know both of them. Uh, I've worked with both of them. Uh, both of them are excellent wheelmen. Um, I know his, uh, Ty's brother, Marcus, a little bit better. Um, I've, I've worked on a couple of boats that he's, he's been on, uh, very, very knowledgeable captain. Um, you know, uh, very good leader. He's definitely a resource for people. Um, Ty is hilarious. Um, I've, I've had a few three-way phone calls with him and, and, he, uh, he definitely knows how to make the job fun. Um, you know, and, and I've never, I don't think I've ever actually worked with him. I've just worked around him. And, um, I, um, uh, I had one time where I was southbound and I had this boat calling, calling mine, kept calling it by the wrong name. And I kind of get, um, I kind of get a little salty about that. And, uh, and, and I had no idea it was him. I couldn't tell. <laughs> and, uh, I got a phone call and uh, one of my friends was just busting a gut because he'd been talking to Ty and Ty could barely, barely hold it in. He was, he's just, uh, just like ass off that he, he got me all fired up, you know, and you know, I try not to get too salty about it, but sometimes you can't help it. So, but uh, yeah, I, um, I, I, they've got, they both got a pretty good reputation. I actually worked for their dad. Um, when I first came to line boats, I think I did, two trips with them, uh, with him. And, uh, he was amazing. Um, I actually got to see him. Oh man, it would have been like 20, 2017 or 2018. I was working on the Mrs. P for Riverview and, uh, we, uh, we're going to do a, a bow boat, uh, assist through Sioux line bridge. And, uh, it was shut out fog and there was no making that bridge. And so we tied up to him and, uh, you know, I, I figured out that it was Terry, you know, and, I, uh, I went, uh, went over and said hi to him and I hadn't seen him in years. And, uh, you know, it was really good to get to, to reconnect. I had no idea he was still working. I thought for sure he retired by now. So, yeah, I, I, I know quite a bit of them. Um, uh, I know, uh, the nephew, uh, I can't remember if it's Marcus's nephew. Anyways, his, t his name's Tyler Matheny. Uh, I think it's actually James Tyler Matheny, but, uh, he was my deconeer for a little while. And, uh, man, I begged and pleaded with him not to go to the engine room. He was so good on tow. Uh, man, he would have made a great watchman, a great mate, you know, but sometimes you lose those battles, you know, it's, uh, as a deck guy, you know, I always want to encourage the deck route because that's, you know, that's what I do. So, but he's, uh, an excellent engineer. I think, um, I think he's working for Ingram now. I'm not a hundred percent sure on that, but I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that he's, he's working at Ingram now. A lot, uh, you know, because he's he's happy. At least last time I talked to him, um, but uh, I always had a lot of fun with him. He uh, he could make a song out of any situation, you know. He just <laughs> he bust out into some weird song, and it was it was he was a lot of fun to work with. I really enjoyed working. Well, interestingly enough, I, the day that this episode releases, I was supposed to have Ty Matheny on here, but um, we got to talking on uh, on messenger and i'm actually going to host ty marcus and their father uh we're going to try to publish that one mid uh, mid next month so an interesting synopsis you just provided there um while we're still talking about people out there especially on social media angel of course runs one of those facebook groups and uh has a connection with you how did you in meeting her obviously on the job i assume at the lock and what is your relationship i guess um I, uh, I met her, um, a few times. Um, I, uh, where I first met her was just coming through the locks. Um, she's always, uh, she'd always call me cap. And, uh, when I was a pilot, I, I, I hated being called captain because I'm not the captain. Um, I'm kind of, um, I'm kind of a prude about that. You know, I, I, I used to work for a guy that, uh, was so high on himself, um, about being a captain that it was literally on his mailbox captain, you know, and, um, I may hold a master's license, but 
that doesn't make you a captain, you know, it, it, and, and even when I'm off the boat, you know, I, I don't, I don't like being called captain. You know, I don't, I'm not one of those guys that has the, the, the coffee mug that says I'm the captain. You know, the way I look at it is the only time you're the captain is when you're signed, when you're signed on that station bill as captain, you know? Um, and I think a, a lot more goes into being a captain than just holding a license. Um, you know, I've met a lot of these 100 ton masters and, and you know, it's a, uh, I had a deckhand once that, uh, you know, was, oh, well, I'm a captain too. You know, they just started with the company and, and you know, I'm a captain too. And, you know, they're going to fast track me to the wheelhouse because I've got my master's already. And it's like, what, what license do you have? You know, I've got a hundred ton masters. And I was like, yeah, I had that when I was 22 and, and I didn't, I didn't start driving tow boats until I was in my thirties. So, I mean, it, I think people get high on their titles and I don't like that. But anyways, back to Angel. She, uh, <laughs> I have a bad habit of running off in a different direction. I apologize. But uh, anyways. with Angel, that's, that's perfect for this format, man. Go ahead. So uh, anyways, Angel, you know, she'd always call me Cap. And I, I, nope, nope, I'm just a pilot. Just a pilot. I don't want the responsibility of being a captain. You know, it's in the, you know a lot of responsibility that goes into being a captain she's like well i'm, I'm just trying to show respect and i was like well I, i'm pilot <laughs> you know but um she um she reached out on uh facebook um gosh i um i don't know um it, it was a couple probably a year or so after i i first talked to her on the radio and stuff i'd seen her on facebook quite a bit you know but you know we hadn't really talked you know we weren't i didn't I might message on, on a comment or something here and there, but, uh, you know, she had reached out and she'd had some questions and then, uh, you know, it, it was, it was actually kind of funny because she, um, uh, she, she, I guess was, uh, what Jake would refer to as Facebook stalking. And, uh, she's like, I didn't know you, you were gay. I had no idea you were married. And <laughs> I was like, well, I, you, you never asked, you know, and, and she's like, I had no idea. And, and I was kind of a, I took that as a compliment because generally speaking, I, I don't really feel like I'm the stereotype, but, uh, you know, it's, um, we, we talk periodically, um, you know, uh, when I have industry questions, you know, core questions, she's a good resource, um, you know, and, and, uh, you know, she's always real helpful and, and, you know, who to take those questions to and, um, very professional, um, you know, it, it talking to her over the years, you know, I've learned quite a bit. I, she used to work on a dredge. Um, you know, she's very well educated um, and she's very engaged. She, she cares about the industry. She cares about the people in the industry. She is a little bit wild. I mean, she's always got her purple hair thing going on, especially during football season. You know, and I'll keep my opinions uh, about the Vikings to myself, you know, but um you know, she's, she, she reminds me a lot of a tow boater. You know, you can razz her just like a tow boater and she'll get back to you, you know, cause you know, I always give her shit, you know, anytime we're, we're talking, you know, over the phone or something, you know, I, I always ask her how the, the people's Republic of Minnesota is, you know, and don't you know, a you hoser, you know, and just really rub it in that she's way the hell up North, you know, and, you know, she, she always throws it right back in my face and gives me something else, you know, and, and so, yeah, she's, um, she's a lot of fun. She, she really cares. Uh, it's, it's nice to, nice to see that, um, you know, a lot of people don't, uh, don't realize how important the Corps of Engineers is. Um, you know, and, and a lot of the, uh, a lot of the lock people don't realize, um, how important they are. Um, I mean, we literally couldn't do what we do on the upper Mississippi river without them. You know, um, it, it's like, um, at lock, a lock 10 in Guttenberg there was a guy there that used to have a, a dog and uh you know I, I don't think a lot of lock people realize just how how important something like that is um there's a guy I, I believe it's up there at lock five he's got this, uh, this little pug up there or no it's not a pug it's a Frenchie and uh this this dog knows where the galley door is knows where the food's at and uh you know it those interactions with with the lock people the the interaction if they have a, a lock dog i mean lock 25 used to have a dog and a cat you know um and and those are such uh big morale boosters i mean it really 
takes you out of the hustle and bustle, the, the, I got, I got to get work done atmosphere and it, and it allows you to let your guard down for a few minutes, you know, to just enjoy something that has nothing to do with tow boating. And, um, you know, I've always, um, locks that have had dogs or cats or whatever has always been my favorite. Um, you know, LaGrange lock on the Illinois one, when, when I first started, they had an Australian shepherd down there. And, you know, a couple of years later, they ended up with a, a black lab and, you know, um, you know, and, and these are things, you know, I, I always tell Angel, I was like, you know, you need to let your upper management know that every lock needs to have, have a dog or something, you know, just because um, they're so good for crew morale, um, you know, and, and the, uh, the camaraderie on the upper between um, core people and, and, and tow boaters is, is really good. Um, you know, we, we have a good history of working well together. You know, in the old days, uh, lock guys used to train uh, or train. They used to trade uh, uh, monkey's fists for coffee. So I guess they don't get coffee or they don't have a coffee allotment. You know, and, um, that doesn't go on so much anymore. But, uh, you know, uh, we still, you know, try to work together real well and, and whatnot. I know I know I'm always handing stuff out. I, I usually keep, you know, ball caps or something, uh, company related to, to give out to lock guys as thank yous when they, they do us a solid. Um, you know, but, um, they really do, uh, have a, a lot of impact and, and the upper Mississippi river, you know, it, it, it's just, um, the way that the three different districts, you know, St. Paul district and, uh, Rock Island district, St. Louis, uh, they, they all work together, um, almost seamlessly. I mean, really, it's just, it makes life so much easier because, you know, what the procedure is, you know, it's the same way through every lock and, uh, you know, I, I don't know how much Angel takes that feedback back to her supervisors, but I always, every time I go to a core meeting, I try to to let them know how good of a job they do. Um, you know, and and you know, Angel's a fairly good ambassador for for the lock people. Um, you know, and and she uh, she tries real hard. She she wants to do a good job. She wants uh, everybody to be safe and and have a good time. You know, and and uh, she understands. Sometimes I think she understands what we do a little bit better uh, than, than some of the other lockmen, um, you know, but there are a lot of good lockmen. I, I wish I could remember his name. There's uh, this old guy that works down at lock 25 and he actually used to be a tow boater. So, you know, I mean, he really understands it and he is so easy to deal with. I mean, he just makes life super easy, you know, and uh, you know, these lock guys, they've seen, seen a lot. They, they kind of learn things, pick up on things. They can tell when a guy's wrapping a line up wrong. And they're not afraid to offer that help and say, Hey man, you're, you, you got that backwards or something, you know? And so I really, um, I really enjoy um, Angel. She, she, um, she's a, a lot of fun to talk to. She's got a, a lot of knowledge. Uh, before we stray too far off script here yet again, um, of course, we find you at a shipyard in Paducah right now. How long have you been in there? Uh, about a week. Uh, should be out of here by the end of the week. Um, just getting some air conditioner repair work done. Well, tell me about life in the shipyard on a towboat. It's miserable. <laughs> um, it's it's an opportunity to get things done. Um, most companies uh, don't typically keep wheelhouse personnel on unless the boat's going to be in and out um our plan was to be in and out we uh had some delays uh, you know but we're working them out um for me i i can't stand shipyards um nine times out of ten if i'm going in the yard and i know it's going to be for more than four or five days i'm usually on the phone begging for another boat to go to i don't care what it is but i'll go because i can't stand sitting i um i absolutely hate it it, it just it, it goes against everything i know um, you know, so I've, I've cleaned out and organized my wheelhouse, which it probably desperately needed. And, uh, I've wrote some, some proposals for, um, some proposals for different ideas that I have to, uh, improve safety and, and just to make things a little more efficient. Um, you know, I've, uh, read a couple of books already. Um, you know, I, I it's just, it's for me, it's, it's like watching paint dry. I, I can't. I can't stand it. And I'm sure my guys hate it because I'm wandering around and coming up with all kinds of things that I should probably just keep to myself and, and, and let them do their job, you know, and, 
Um, I'm generally not a micromanager, so, um, you know, they're not used to me coming down and, and asking questions and, and whatnot. So I, uh, I think I have a tendency to slow things down. So that's why I try to keep myself preoccupied up in the wheelhouse. So, uh, but yeah, no, I, I hate it. Um, but my guys are getting a lot of extra work done, uh, things that we have been putting off, you know, and, and, and getting the boat looking good, uh, getting ready for the season, uh, that we got coming up, you know, painting seasons coming and whatnot. So, um, you know, uh, this is a good time to get some interior work done. Uh, typically sh shipyards won't let you do chipping and painting in the yard. Um, so it, it gives us the, a little bit of extra time when we're not busy. And, and that's, again, my, 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 we're go, 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 you know, so I, I, I'm usually not, you know, we usually don't have a whole lot of extra free time to, to get stuff done. So, um, this is kind of helping them out getting some stuff done. So, um, but I am eager to get out of here. <laughs> well, if you can share those details and if it's company specific, obviously we won't, uh, won't worry about it, but what sort of safety proposals are you offering? Um, so I, um, I worked on a, uh, a yacht a couple of years back and um, that yacht had a, um, it had a, a Marine VHF radio on it that was capable of transmitting uh, AIS. It also had a GPS unit attached to the radio. It's all in one. And that tender um, transmitted uh, AIS. And the Coast Guard allows for uh, the tender of a parent ship to transmit the same MMSI number. And so that tender um, was, um, the, the yacht was luxury one. And so the tender, you know, it's AIS would transmit uh, luxury one tender. Uh, it's the same MMSI. The only difference is there's an A at the end of the MMSI number. And um, there's a lot of things that they used it for that we would never, ever consider using for like DSC calling. Um, you know, DSC calling is a wonderful thing, but it, it's, it's complex. Be a pain in the ass to use it if you don't know what you're doing. Um, and it's just not necessary for us, but in layman's term, DSE calling is basically where you can have a, uh, encrypted channel where you're, you're still talking on channel 13, but nobody else, but you and the parent ship can hear it. Um, so the other great thing is, um, you know, that radio has the, the distress signal on it. So they push that distress signal and, and it would alert to both vessels. Um, but, uh, the reason I, I like the idea of transponding AIS for, for skips on towing vessels is because it gives the captain peace of mind first and foremost, you know, and it allows them to, to see where you're at. Um, sometimes, especially on the lower, you got longer crew changes and, and it would be nice to be able to see where they're at, but it allows them to, uh, help navigate, you know, like, Hey, you know, you, you pass the boat ramp or, Hey, you're, you know, thousand foot from it. It's on your right hand side or whatever. Um, plus it's a 25 watt radio. So it gives them the range, you know, down on the lower, you know, the cell service isn't the greatest. It's hard to communicate down there. And, um, you know, so it, it makes it difficult, uh, to communicate and having a bigger radio gives you more, more distance. Uh, it also gives uh, other vessels um, an understanding of what it is that you're doing. You know, if they see that, you know, this is the Roy Clavery skiff, you know, then they're going to know that, hey, I know what that is. You know, that that's the skiff of the Roy Clavery and they're probably making a crew change, you know. And it just gives everybody an understanding of what you're doing, uh, gives everybody the ability to see where you're at. It gives the, the ability to transmit distress signal if need be. Um you know, it just, um, it's probably, I don't know. I mean, we've been doing it without it for, for years and years and years doing it safely. You know, I, I'm not saying that, that you know, it, it's an unsafe thing. I just think that this adds yet another layer of safety, uh, layer of safety. Um, it, it's a, it's a good, it's a good training tool. Um, it gives your, um, you know, gives your deck crew the ability, you know, if they wanted to, you could add a SIMRAD chart plotter to it and uh they'd be able to see other vessels and then they could start practicing communicating vessels you know so like if you had somebody that was a mate and he was a steersman or had a steersman's license you know this would be a good time to start going over rules of the road 
Um, a lot of people aren't aware of it, but your deck crew is just as much responsible to know the rules of the road as you are. And um, this would be a good uh, application for them to actually use it, which would make it easier for them to to learn it, you know, because, I mean, most people, you learn something, you never use it. It's hard to remember. So, you know, if you have the ability to see the vessel coming towards in, and you don't even really need uh, the ability to see the vessel's name, you know, you, you, you know, you can say, you know, uh, Roy Clavery skiff or whatever boat you happen to be on to the southbound boat. And they're going to know you're talking to them because they see you, you know, and, and then you have that two-way dialogue. You, hey, I'll see you on the one or, hey, I'll be on the two. You want me to cross your stern? You want me to cross your bow? You know, and they start communicating. They're, the, the more they're going to retain it and remember it. So, you know, I, I think it can be used for training purposes um, in that aspect, but Ultimately, it's just, it's a way to give, give peace of mind, really, um, especially on the lower. I mean, if you're doing a crew change below Baton Rouge, there is so much commercial traffic down there. It, it would, it would be helpful for, for you to be seen down there. You know, I mean, you might be coming down one side of a ship and you got another boat coming down the other side of the ship, you know, at least they could put a call out to find out who you are, what you're doing. They know you're there, you know, so that, that was my idea. Um, I, um, uh, like I said, I spend most of my, my time on the water and around the water and I'm always thinking of ways to, to improve things and, and do a better job. Well, we're going to get off script a little bit. You mentioned something here, uh, and I'm not sure if I'm misremembering from our first conversation, but you, you said your divorce, if I remember correctly, your first marriage wasn't really legitimate anyway. Is that the same relationship? Uh, so yeah, that, that's the same relationship. So, um, we, we still had to go through some paperwork. Um, I call it a divorce just cause that's easy. Um, but yeah, no, the, the state of Illinois didn't recognize my marriage. So it's, uh, that's, that's the one I'm talking about. Um, you know, I was, I was married, we, I think we were together for five years, married for three. And, uh, when, when we departed, you know, I, I gave up pretty much everything and just, uh, at the time I was actually living in a, a little Ford Explorer. Um, but that's when I was staying up in Seneca. Um, and then I, um, I blew the engine up in that and went out and bought a, a big old F two fifty super duty diesel truck, you know, cause I always wanted one. So why not? You know? So, um, but yeah, that's, 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 uh, that's the relationship I was in. Um, the, my current marriage I've, in July, I think will be, married for four years, been together for five. Um, but, uh, couldn't convince him to live out a truck if I wanted to. I've tried multiple times. Um, I, uh, I'm a bit of a transient. I like to, I like to get around. Um, you know, when I was living out of the truck, um, my, my dad used to call it the circuit, you know, cause I would, I would get off my regular boat and then I'd get on a Riverview tug and then usually I'd get off there where I'd have like three or four days left. Well, you know, that lacrosse isn't, but maybe three and a half, four hours away from where my parents live. So I'd drive down and see them, you know, and then I'd, I'd spend a day there. I'd go down to Peoria and I'd see my, my godson, you know, and then I'd leave there and I'd go down to Springfield and I'd spend the night down there. My, uh, my uh, grandfather and my grandmother are both in turn there at uh, Camp Butler Cemetery, right next to my uh, great uncle Vic. Um, anyways, um, you know, I always stop there, give them, you know, put flowers out. And uh, if I have time, I stop at Charlie Parker's. And uh, if you've never been to Charlie Parker's, that's uh, a common stop for me. Um, they they were on both diners, dives, and drives, and man vs. food. Um, they're known for their horseshoe sandwiches. Uh, and if you don't know what a horseshoe is, basically it's, it's a piece of bread, uh, basically a burger patty covered with French fries and then covered with, uh, basically just liquid gold cheese, um, cheese sauce. Um, so I'm not a big, uh, horseshoe fan, but I, I, uh, I go there for breakfast. Their breakfast is what I go for. They have, um, what they call the half and half, which is a breakfast horseshoe. And I like it because I like options uh, and probably because I'm partly a glutton. But, uh, you know, you get a choice between toast or uh, biscuit or uh, uh, English muffin, you know, and then you have a choice. Do you want sausage or uh, ham or do you want 
bacon or in my case all three you know and then uh you know they cover it with either american fries or hash browns or they'll put french fries on it, whatever you want and then you can get it with cheese sauce or you can get it with gravy or you get what i get which is the half and half where it's got half gravy half cheese sauce which is the holy mecca the that is the the, the grail um so that's what they were on diners dives and drives for uh they were on man versus food um because they have a they have a four stack of 16 inch pancakes and if you can eat that in an hour it's free it's like 17.99 it's a lot of food i've never attempted it i'm not gonna because their regular pancake is the plate size and they are the thick fluffy pancakes the, the kind that you can pour a half gallon soap on and it will soak up every drop of it and uh you know i i, I kind of feel bad because like um when i first got turned loose i was on a boat that was on the illinois river a lot and uh you know that's really convenient because we'd leave out of st louis i'd always leave an hour and a half early stop at charlie parker's get me some breakfast and they also have coffee and i'm a coffee guy love coffee but their coffee is this old tinny, like dirty coffee. Like it just tastes like old school diner coffee. And it brings back so many memories for me. I mean, I remember being a kid, my dad used to take us to this diner that had uh, the little donut window thing. And we'd meet up with my grandpa and, you know, he wasn't supposed to, but grandpa always let me have some of his coffee. And it just reminds me of that. So, um, but there was, there was one occasion um, I was tripping on another boat and uh, the cook on there, Benny, um, used to be a deckhand and he just, you know, couldn't do the deck job anymore. So they made him a cook and he was not a not a good cook at all, but he was a great guy. He was a lot of fun to ride with. You know, you go in there, you'd ask him what we have for lunch and he, well, it depends, you know, it, it, it depends on what? Well, it depends on what thaws out first. You know, it just not a not a great cook but uh um he and i were the only one in the crew change and i was like benny you want to get breakfast tomorrow i'd really like to get breakfast i'll buy and he's like shit let's go you know and so we go and uh you know he's looking and he's like well, what do you normally get and i told him well i get the half, half. i was like but i only get the pony shoe i don't get the full shoe because i can't eat that much food i wouldn't recommend it well, what's the order? He, he orders the whole shoe plus a pancake and uh, he ate every bit of it. And uh, I didn't know it, but um, I guess Benny was a pretty bad diabetic and uh, he should not have been eating any of that. <laughs> and uh, I felt bad because a couple trips later, you know, he ended up having to retire, you know, because his diabetes just got too bad to, to work on the boats. But um, he was he was funny. But uh, I've taken lots and lots of deck crew to uh to charlie parker's it's it's one of my favorite places to stop i actually have a, a deckhand on the boat here that uh lives fairly close and uh when he's feeling generous he'll go and pick me up a bag of their coffee because they sell their coffee in bags you can get it so and uh, i just uh I th I th the last time that he bought me a bag of that i had quit drinking uh caffeinated coffee i've been drinking decaf for almost a year and uh well i wasn't not gonna drink it and um uh, I remember I, I, I drank the whole pot and uh, I couldn't sleep. I, I was up for like two days, just, just twitching, you know, it's just entirely too much caffeine, you know, but uh, I love it. And, and I'll never, I'll never turn down a Parker's coffee, but um, yeah, you know, and, and that, that's, you know, part of the loop, you know, the, in the winter time when Riverview be taking their tugs down to uh, Amelia, Louisiana, you know, I'd, uh, I'd get off the boat and, uh, you know, I, I would take a week to get down there. And, uh, there's a website I use called uh, freecampsites.net and, uh, you can literally put in your destiny, your starting point in your destination, and it'll show you all of the campsites between you and there and map it out. And, um, they, uh, they have, uh, green tents are for free sites, yellow tents are iffy, and then red tents are pay sites. And so you can find all kinds of free camping sites all over the country. And so, you know, I go camping out in the middle of nowhere just to kind of recharge my batteries a little bit. And uh, then I'd stop off in New Madrid and see Jimbo Cheatham. And, you know, he'd, he'd cook me up whatever he cooks. He's an amazing, amazing cook. He's owned a couple of restaurants, but uh, he's you know, John D. Nugent. Uh, great guy. Um, and then, you know, I'd, I'd leave there and I go camping a little bit more somewhere in Mississippi and, 
and I'd make my way down to uh, Abita Springs, Louisiana, which is where uh, my friend Troy, I work with him at Paradise, uh, me, him, and, and Jerome Price. Uh, we, we all work there together, and he's a chief engineer at Boomtown Casino now down there. And um, uh, I, I love Abita Springs. It's a great little town, and they have an amazing cafe there. Uh, their Cajun breakfast is phenomenal. Their sausage is a little spicy, but it's worth it. It's uh, it's definitely worth it. They have uh, they call them pancakes, but it's it's a cornbread pancake, and, and oh god, it's good. Uh, and then they have a whole menu of adult coffee. So you know, I go down and see Troy, and usually he's driving home because I'm usually schnookered and not capable of driving. <laughs> you know. I'll hang out with him in April. Uh, his wife also worked at Paradise. She was in charge of uh, uh, housekeeping at the the hotel. And, uh, you know, I've, I've just tried to maintain these friendships over the years. And I get done there and then I, I go over to Devin Jerome's house. And Jerome was a chief engineer or assistant engineer at Paradise. Now he's chief engineer down at um, uh, down at the Amelia Bell and Amelia. And uh, it was funny because uh, what started me working in the shipyard for, for Jeremy was I would spend my winters down there in Louisiana because who wants to live in their truck up in Wisconsin, you know? So I go down and hang out with Devin Jerome. And, um, I, I remember the first year Jeremy brought one of his boats down there, uh, LD Marine and Amelia. And he calls me up and he's like, Hey, are you, uh, are you visiting your, your friend Jerome? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, Hey, um, I got a boat in the shipyard in Amelia. Would you come and take a look at it for me? And I was like, no, <laughs> no i'm on vacation i just spent the last nine months working for it for you i no. <laughs> oh come on come on i i'll pay you for it and you know i i okay but i'm just gonna look and then i'd end up working there for the however long i was down there and then i'd make the loop back you know stop off at you know camp and see jimbo again and then go back to work and uh, but that's that's the full loop you know and um, you know, occasionally, sometimes I'll divert over to Indiana, see my sister and stuff like that. You know, you just never know where, where I was going to go while I was living in my truck. You know, I, I spent a couple of weeks out in the desert in Arizona because I heard it was nice in the winter and that's a lie, but, uh, desert's never nice, but, uh, it was, <laughs> it was, it was fun. I enjoyed it. So, but, uh, you know, and, and I think tow boating is a lot why I like to, you know, I'm just constantly moving, you know, I, I've gotten to see a lot of really cool things. Um, you know, I, going down to Louisiana, you know, working in the shipyard and stuff gave me the opportunity to run over my first alligator, completely jacked my truck up. I don't recommend that. Try not to hit alligators because <laughs> they don't give as much as you think they would. You know, but, uh, you know, it's, it's just, it's always been a lot of fun. You know, I, um, Jeremy and I were on a, we're just on a, a little, uh, I think we were going to get some fire extinguisher serviced or something like that. And, uh, you know, we, uh, he took me to see where the Delta queen was and that was really cool. Um, you know, there's a, you know, you wouldn't think it, but there's a lot of history down there. Um, you know, and, and, um, I, uh, I, I, I'm not a big city guy. I don't really care for big cities. So I generally stay away from New Orleans as much as possible. But uh, uh, this last winter, I went down um, during Christmas time to see Deb and Jerome again. Got to hang out with uh, Jeremy and Julia's wife uh, a little bit. And uh, my my mom and dad came down to camp at uh, Lake Sand Park there in Morgan City and had a real good to finally got to kick one of my list, one of my bucket list items off, which is to go to the uh, World War II Museum in uh in new orleans and uh i'm just going to tell you right now if you're going to go to the world war ii museum there's a hotel right there book you a night or two because that place is going to take you more than a day if you think you're going to walk through that place in a day you are absolutely nuts um we we got through most of it uh in one day uh, but i i definitely regretted it the next day because i was exhausted and we didn't get to see near as much as we liked uh, but that place was um it was very awe-inspiring. Um, you know, one of the big reasons I wanted to go down there uh, was because I'd always been told that they have um, they have a small section of the uh, the museum that's dedicated to the World War II Merchant Marines, which everybody knows they don't generally get near enough credit for the work that they did and, and the risk that they put themselves in. And uh, that was that would be. Um, really cool to see i mean it uh, the whole time 
you ever um you know how like uh you see something and you kind of like get the chill down your back and your the hairs on your arm stand up a little bit and that just that was like all day all day there i mean just the the history uh of, of what happened during world war ii and and the stories of each of these individuals that 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 was there um i mean it was just it was very cool uh and i i totally recommend anybody ever gets a chance to go down there that they should um you know and and i guess part of what caused me to pull the trigger on that um this year was uh Earlier in the year, uh, I got to take the LST-325 from Evansville, Indiana, up to La Crosse, Wisconsin. And uh, the LST-325 is the last operational LST within the United States. Uh, there is another LST, but it is not permanently moored. It doesn't move, but this one still moves. And they they pick a different city every year, and they go and they open it up for, for tours. And, uh, you know, this... The, <laughs> this old antiquated piece of Navy equipment, uh, you know, it's still running today. And the, the majority of the, the crew on there are all veterans. I mean, not all of them. I mean, obviously I'm not a veteran, you know, um, you know, but uh, they, they utilize volunteer uh, Tobo pilots to help move it around. And uh, you know, I, I um, I'm friends with Mike Conklin and, and it's something I've always wanted to do ever since I, made my first trip on the Ohio I saw it and I thought man that thing is really cool I'd like to get on that someday and I met Mike Conklin through working at Riverview he used to be um used to be the captain on the John R. O. Purley uh, really good guy uh, very very intelligent um I believe he either did or used to sit on the board there at the Mississippi River Museum that's where he's from and I just called him up and I was like hey man I, I think I got enough time in driving boats I you know do you think you could hook me up and he got me hooked up with uh, John Vaughn. Uh, John works for uh, Marquette, and uh, and he hooked me up with Captain Kubota. Uh, uh, Bob Kubota is the guy that uh, is the lead captain for the LST. And but um, it was it was an amazing amazing trip. Um, if people think that that tow boaters are harsh and uh, <laughs> and they, they need to go go ride the LST with a bunch of sixty five year old veterans. Uh, those guys, boy, they, they don't hold nothing back. Um, but they, um, they were such a cool crew. Um, you know, they, they all had their parts to play. They got, they got people that are solely in the deck department, people who are solely in the interim departments, people who solely run navigational watch. They got a, a full galley staff and, um, you know, these guys are sleeping in bunk beds, you know, in, in the same quarters that, the you know, the, the Navy sailors were sleeping in back in the day, you know, and, and it, it's funny because they, they, uh, they literally volunteer, uh, I think it's 80 working hours to be able to go on this trip. So these guys are volunteering 80 hours to go and work for 30 days on a boat with crappy living conditions, you know, and, and don't get me wrong, they weren't bad. I mean, I've been on some rough tugs before, but uh, they're definitely not a hotel, you know, and, uh, you know, it's not quiet, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's an old ship, so it's got its problems, you know, and this boat is maintained and operated by all of these old veterans, you know, and uh, they got a, a guy that he's in charge of, the he's the, the radio guy, and he's gone around and, and other people have as well, They've gone to basically get all of this old uh period correct radio equipment and this guy is making the stuff work and uh you know he's got a ham radio on there and he's basically turned the whole ship into his antenna and i mean he's reaching out and talking to people all over the world and it's just so amazing and uh once i did that i was just i i had to go you know that that i had to go and see the world war ii museum and uh you know uh I, I hope that in the future I get a chance to volunteer, not so much driving the boat, but they have work weeks and stuff. And, and I, I'm, I'm trying to keep in contact best I can and, and, and uh, whatnot. And it was actually kind of nice. Um, I've got it right here. The, uh, as a thank you, they gave me their, their book uh, of the story of it's uh, bringing back a hero uh, by Robert D. Uh, Jornland, uh, captain LST three, two, five. And, uh, 
just the story of how they went and got it. And uh, I mean, that that in itself is amazing because this boat was in mothballs in Greece. Uh, you know, the, the U.S. government had given all these old LSTs to different governments and stuff. And, uh, you know, all of these 60 and 70 year old men went over to Greece and uh, they were late to get to the one that they wanted. So they had to get the second best. And they had to just start pulling parts off of all these old junk LSTs to make this one work enough to bring it across the ocean. And uh, they ran into some hangups with the government. And uh, they ended up having to take a little bit of a stop in, in England, I guess. And uh, the, the people over there just loved them, took them in, helped them out as best they could because they were so thankful for what they had done during World War II. And they eventually made it over to the U.S. Um, and it's just, it was... It was amazing. Um, the uh, the the guy that was in charge of the galley, um, there was a article that came out while we were on our cruise about his LST, and um, I guess um, the Philippines uh, is it the Philippines or Taiwanese? I can't remember. Uh, one of those islands has his old LST, and they sank it on a on a rock bar, and they use it as an outpost. And uh, I think it was Taiwan actually. Um, because the, the Chinese Navy has been basically preventing them from resupplying that LST. And it was so cool to, to hear his stories and, and hear him talk about the, you know, his career in the Navy and, and the fact, you know, to have somebody that is on your, you know, on this LST that, that served on that LST, you know, I mean, it was just so cool. Um, and, um, I mean, you, you learn more than you could ever hope to, to retain. And uh, so that's kind of why I, I hope to, to get an opportunity to go back and work with those guys. They, they really just top notch. Well, that would be a great place to stop. But I did have another note from this morning. I think I saw on Facebook somewhere. I can't find it since we've been talking. But the, uh, the great pork tenderloin battle of 2024. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, so... Central Illinois uh, and in Indiana, pork tenderloins sandwiches are a pretty big thing. Um, I couldn't find a pork tenderloin to save my life in Oklahoma. So I regularly are going, I, I go through withdrawals on a pretty regular basis. And um, I had, um, uh, when I was just a pilot, um, I, there's this, uh, it's called uh, Big Dave and Holly's. It's in LeClaire. Um, most people on the river just call it the ice cream shack. It's a red and white building right there on the, the riverfront. And um, I've eaten there before. Uh, they have good pork tenderloins. It's not the best ones you ever had, but they, they, they definitely fit a hole in your stomach and, and that, that works great. Um, you know, and uh, I had, uh, when I was a pilot, uh, I had uh, this new captain, his name was Miles, and uh, I convinced him to let, to let me get lunch for the crew at, uh, at Big Dave and Holly's. And uh, so we kind of slow belled up across there, sent the skip out and uh, they have great ice cream. Everybody seems to like their ice cream. I'm not a huge ice cream guy, but you know, who doesn't uh, like ice cream, I guess. But anyway, so um, that kind of started a, uh, a little bit of a tradition. Um, so every year uh, when I'm coming up the upper, if I have an opportunity to, if I can make it work out, we'll, uh, we'll get pork tenderloins from there. And, uh, it's funny cause, uh, Jeremy had tagged me in a pork tenderloin, um, that is at a restaurant there in, in Bettendorf. Well, Jeremy knows that I'm addicted to pork tenderloins. I, I just, um, you know, I, I could be not hungry at all and you could offer me one and I'm probably going to eat it. So, um, <laughs> Jeremy learned this like he knew I had a pork tenderloin thing but he didn't know how bad it was and uh I can't remember if it was last year or the year before but he was uh he he had one of his boats contracted to follow the American Queen around um they they had some kind of issue the Coast Guard said they had to have a shadow boat and uh I didn't have anything going on and so he called me up and I I jumped on there and, and uh, had a lot of fun I I, I love that that American Queen got to see all, all of it. I got a whole tour. It was great. Talked to the chief engineers, learned the history of the engines on it. And um, anyways, uh, when that contract was done, uh, we, we were light boating back up to, uh, to Bellevue. And uh, it was getting close time for me to go back to work. And uh, so I met up with uh, Jeremy um, 
in Burlington, Iowa. We, we shoved into their seawall and, uh, you know, he's like, well, let's go to lunch. And he's like, what do you want? It's like pork tenderloins, of course, <laughs> you know, because, like, you know, Burlington's got three or four different restaurants there that have a pretty good reputation for pork tenderloin sandwiches. So we went and I, uh, I think I had mine devoured before he even got like two bites into his. And he's like, Jesus, I didn't realize how much you like those things. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's, it's funny. Cause like when you work on a towboat, you know, you got people from all over, all over the country. And every, every area in the country has their thing that, that people love. And uh, mine happens to be pork tenderloins. You know, some people, they like their chocolate gravy. I, gross, but whatever. You know, obviously people from Louisiana like their crawfish. I'm not a big fan of mud bugs, but that's, uh, you know, everybody has their thing. You know, so um, I, I've got a crew that, that you know, is, is from Arkansas and, and some from Louisiana and you know, they've never experienced pork tenderloins before and they have now and they're believers. So, uh, yeah, uh, Jeremy likes to prod me a little bit. It's again, the towboat thing. We like to egg each other on. And so, uh, you know, he, he posted that and, and, you know, cause he knows I'm on the boat and I have zero access to a pork tenderloin sandwich. So just rub that in a little bit, you know? Um, so, and that, that of course spawns more, some more debate, you know, um, uh, an Ingram pilot I met, or captain, I should say, uh, I met up at the Rochester meeting, you know, was, was giving Jeremy some flack because he didn't uh, tag him in a pork tenderloin sandwich, and which, of course, spawned Jake Johnson to go ahead and make some comments, and top-tier wheelman was thrown out there a few times, so, you know, just keeping the, the rivalry up, you know, so, but, uh, yeah, no, it's, uh, they're, they're awesome. If you have an opportunity to ever get one, you should. Um, I can't remember the name of it, but there's a place in Nate played in Illinois. They make pork tenderloins, um, but they also will beat the pork tenderloin out so big that you, uh, they use it as their crust for their pizza. And, uh, it is amazing. Um, just absolutely amazing. So, um, it's kind of funny cause, uh, uh, the cook I have on the boat right now is from, from Indiana and just the differences between Indiana and Illinois, uh, and how, how you eat your pork tenderloin is, is hilarious because, uh, I put everything on mine, lettuce, tomato, onion, uh, mayonnaise, uh, pickles, uh, onions, um, uh, ketchup, mayonnaise, uh, mustard. So, uh, when I did that, Rex about fell off his chair. And he's like, oh, my God, I can't believe you put ketchup on that. What is the matter with you? And I was like, well, <laughs> how do you get it? He's like, mayonnaise and mustard, that's it. <laughs> it's like, well, I'm sorry. I, I got to have my ketchup. So, you know, it's, uh, it, it's just it's funny that the differences, you know, and that, that's, um, you know, one of the great things, you know, about towboating. You know, people don't really look at it as a, a melting pot, but it is. And we learn from each other and we grow. And I've not gotten him to try catch up on it. And I don't think I ever will, but I will keep trying. Well, now I'm hungry. Brandon, <laughs> uh, thanks again for your time today, but I hope you don't lose your mind over the next week sitting there still in the shipyard. But uh hope you can also find you a sandwich on the way home one of these days. Well, I, I'm telling you, if I'm here any longer, I'm going to start Googling and seeing where the nearest pork tenderloin sandwich is. But I don't know that Paducah is known for it. So if you know anybody that knows Paducah well and they, they know where to find one, have them message me. I'll make a few calls. Thanks again, bud. You too. This has been a production of Where You At Studios, LLC.